a minute early. A whole minute early. I'm just starting streaming now because I want to verify that the thing's working. Because there's been a lot of um, stuff on YouTube. So I want to make sure it's all started up correctly. So our train simulation is now live. Got the tweeters gone. I assume the YouTube notification has also gone out. And I'm sure the chat will shortly be filling up with these. Train simulation is now live. Got the tweeters gone. Yeah, it probably helps if I um, I mute the stream when I look at it, as we found out the other week when I last did one. So there we go. Obviously, the consummate professional strikes again. I am great at this streaming shit lark. So, I think it's probably about time. No, I get a crown because I'm the, the daddy of all streaming. That's got nothing to do with uh, me being the channel owner. I just get that for being fucking ace. So, yeah, as I said, sometimes I put swear words here before the warning about swearing. Or I just say fuck randomly beforehand for the warning. I mean, the warning's probably pointless anyway at this point because the five to ten people who ever watch this already know that I'm going to say fuck, con, bollocks, whatever. Usually, as I'm approaching a red signal at far too fast a speed to stop. So, with no further ado, but probably some ado when it's time to actually, you know, go back to the game or be fucking about with volume sliders or whatever, let's do some trains. Warning Sweary Train Simulator will include the swears. There are many also scenes of Michael Portello nature which some viewers well, may find upsetting. Please be assured, any bad language is, is down to really being just excited about trains, and it's not intended to offend. So let's just enjoy some trains. Come on! <laughs> Didn't time that right. Oh, look, I've left the map up. There's a good start. Uh, so, yeah, as you see, Glasgow to Edinburgh at the moment. That's the first section we'll be driving tonight. And then, if you're really lucky and things don't just completely fuck up, we'll do some more. Um, so, yeah, Glasgow to Edinburgh. Um, so, I just need to do something first, which is adjust the volume downwards because this train's kind of loud, kind of claggy, kind of diesel. Daddy's here. In the cab of the train, ready to go. I'm going to set the old lights up. Uh, the doors are already open because apparently that's how they start in this scenario. Yes, my lights are all white. She's the Edinburgh Waverley via Falkirk. Um, the liveries are a whole mixed bag of bullshit on this. Um, but we are currently at Glasgow Queen Street. Um, obviously, anybody who knows Glasgow will possibly recognize this if it wasn't made up of about 10 polygons and people walking around as if they've shot themselves well, yeah there you go glasgow queen street got rail and these people aren't even animated they're just copied and pasted all over the place and even the um well that's slightly worrying well okay we're off to get that oh it's okay he's a flat sprite is he 
I didn't realise these were all flat sprites. <laughs> oh, this is great fun. Whee there. You ever get the feeling that... Um, oh, I'm going to make myself sick doing this. You ever get the feeling like the eyes are following you around the room on this? I never realised they were flat. Probably makes um, probably makes good sense. But yeah, Glasgow Queen Street here. Uh, with its branch of AJ Thompson. And it's... Um, Renabate, is that? Renabate and coffee and burger burger. Crusty supper. It's got fucking crusty supper. <laughs> oh Christ. Sorry guys. Um, I don't know why it's buffering. It's not saying it's struggling on my thing. And frother. So you can go for a crusty supper. Um, and then go next door to Frother for a coffee. Or go to Renabades for a drink, by the look of that. Christy supper, Jesus. There's always something. I haven't even looked that closely around here before. I've driven this route once. And played with it. Is it really Renegades? No, I'm, I, I can't read. But I'm calling it Renabades. Yeah, I suppose that could be a G as well as a B. But I'm calling it Renabades. Renabades. Oh... It has to be. There has to be a reflection of the person taking the photo. Now, there's just a guy in a... Um, oh, if I'm looking at the scenery, don't make me drive the train yet. Paused it now. There's just a guy in a top sort of staring, at, basically saying, why the fuck are you taking my picture? I'm going to come out and batter you. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of cafes. You'd think the competition would be insane. With, like... Two cafes, a crusty supper, and burger burger. I'm just, I'm obsessed now with looking for reflections of people taking the actual pictures. Um, they're just pictures of people staring into your soul. Okay, well that's all very fun. We'll go through the ticket gate and into the cab of the train. Uh, oh yeah, I need to unpause it. Into the cab of the train. The doors are shutting, and we need to into the cab of the train. Thank you. Okay, uh, signal's off. Off we go. Yep. It's still the 1990s in Glasgow. Which which is progress, because it used to be the 1970s and the 1990s. <laughs> Prusty Supper is very much in keeping with the general theme of this channel. And considering we're running between Edinburgh and Glasgow, I'm, sh I'm sure there will be plentiful reviews, source material, um, for the copying and the pasting. Uh, where is my live map? There it is. Thank you, live map. Well, the acceleration out of this station is going to be shit, because it's a 1 in 50 gradient uphill. Um, but yes, the Turbo Star isn't exactly the world's fastest train off the mark. But, which is the the class 170 that we're in. Uh, we've done 170s before. Um, and I think I've probably told you all about the class 170 before. Um, if you didn't watch that episode or I didn't actually say anything, then pff, tough shit. Because I can't be bothered going through it all. We're just going to... Whoa, okay. I got, I got the old Wikipedia files up there. Uh, I'm really just checking if the engines are made by Cummins. Um, nope, they're made by MTU, so there's not even any humour to be had for that. Yes, you can see us grinding our way up the incline out of Glasgow Queen Street. At um, 25 miles an hour, slowly creeping up to 26 shortly. Um, AWS warning there for the double yellow signal. Okay. Incline, so yeah, it's an incline, and the trains aren't that great off the mark anyway. So, what are you gonna do? You just have to take what you're given, don't you? <laughs> God, I thought that again is probably a theme for this stream people taking what they're given. There isn't anything better to do on a Monday night. It's cold and miserable outside. And on this stream, it's cold and miserable inside as well. But you can have a look at the train, so it's all good. Oh, there's a red signal. 
somehow I don't think stopping for that race signal is going to pose too much of an issue. Getting started again may well do. So yeah, I was going to say the Turbo Stars, some of the first trains built after privatisation in the UK. Just after privatisation. Oh, it's gone yellow now, that's fine. Uh, just after privatisation, basically, no new trains were bought. It was all the existing stuff just being used for as long as possible until it sort of broke down or exploded and they had to buy new stuff. So the 170s were one of the first sets of trains. They're also quite numerous. Um, 122 sets of them, two or three car configuration, and they're all over the place. So there are these ones up in Scotland going up and down. They're probably going to be replaced quite shortly because this line has now been electrified. Um, but we're obviously in the pre-electrification days of dirty old diesels. Uh, this train's a lot louder than um, it sounds even from inside. I've just turned the volume down massively because of the fact that it's a noisy bastard. 100%, um, again, we're still going up the 1 in 50 out of Glasgow Queen Street. We're going to get to the top in a minute. Uh, first, Our first stop is Falkirk High, platform 1. Um, not necessarily a high level station, that's just the name of the station, Falkirk High. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that, those are all the, the facts, really, other than Falkirk's a fucking grim place and you should never go there. But that's just Scotland, isn't it? Hello, all the Scottish people on the stream who are about to both agree with me and tell me to fuck off. I'm not Scotland, and only Scottish people are allowed to call Scotland grim. Otherwise, it's racist. W for honk your horn. And off we go. There's a line curving away. That goes off somewhere else. I can't even remember where. Just not towards Edinburgh. Oh, that might be the route that goes to Edinburgh via a different way. Uh, oh, yeah. Probably break for this red signal that will be coming up after this one. We're still behind something. It would appear. Certainly nothing as fast moving as our Turbo Star. Or slightly inaccurately named Turbo Star. But you know, Daddy's given it the thrashing of its life anyway to get it up the hill and round the bends and into the platform as quickly as possible. So yeah, these are all over the place. We saw them doing runs on the S uh, Essex? Essex? What the fuck has Essex got to do with it? Uh, the Wherry Lines around Norfolk. Um, they operate... Uh, they were being operated by TransPennine across the Pennines. Um, they operate here in Scotland. They operate on cross-country services. Yeah, the fucking streaming's going mental tonight. It keeps going red on me. I don't know why. No, Proz is in Falkirk. Mm. I doubt that somewhat. Maybe there's a crypto miner running in the background. I can't see anything else running that might be pissing it off. But it just keeps occasionally um, crapping out. Apologies if you are getting buffering. There should be a lot of buffer to stop that from happening for the occasional blip. But Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Bishop Briggs. Oh, chat's always out of sync. Chat's always a little bit slow. Okay, good. Um, the chat's always a little bit slow and out of sync. That's fine. I don't mind that. I don't care about that. I'll just respond to you when I see the message come up. It's on a bit of a delay. Um, can we actually get going yet? No, it's still the yellow signal. Back in hell. I was in front of us isn't very fast. We can't even go at 85. Top speed of these units is... Da, 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 uh, 100 miles an hour, I think. It doesn't seem to be in the cab anywhere, though. Usually a big warning saying, don't go faster than that. About two yellows now, because we've backed off a bit. Something I said just now, flat out, hasn't come up. Uh, okay. I d YouTube recently, um, a tring or repeat filtering or anything on there. Um, so if stuff's not coming up in the chat, I can only apologize. don't have any sort of spam... Oh, you see, no, you see, no, people, we don't, we don't, um, we don't insult the Jews, that's anti-Semitic. But the Scots, pff, we can knock ourselves out, because they're all twats. They just deserve what's coming to them. 
I say this in the full knowledge that there is several miles between me and Scotland. What the fuck is going on with this? Yeah, this ain't good. One moment. I'm going to see what else is running on this machine because there's obviously something that's twatting the CPU um, and causing issues. Let's have a look. Because whatever it is, is fucking... What the fuck is that? Get out of it. Right. That should be better now. Um, I have no idea what... No, it's not IRC. I shut that. I made a big point of shutting that. Um, it was the driver for my tree stick. I used to play Elite Dangerous on occasionally. Now, why that would be taking up 25% CPU, your guess it is as good as mine. But it's dead now. Um, so we can fuck off. Speed limit here, 100 miles an hour, as you can see, we're pretty much out of the outskirts of Black Blackpool. Fucking obsessed with Blackpool just because I've been there for the weekend. Shut up about Blackpool. So we're just out of the outskirts of Glasgow. There we go. That's what we're doing. That's where we're going from and to. Like I say, we're heading for Falkirk High, which isn't a high school. Um, I don't know what it's named after, actually. Just know that it was renamed... Um, it was really just called Falkirk. Falkirk. But Falkirk gained several stations over the years as more stuff got built. Falkirk also has Falkirk, Gravenstone and Camelon. On a different line. Well, no, because nobody ever accuses the Scottish of running a global conspiracy to control the world's money and services and whatever else. Scotland's just not that interesting. The only jokes people make about Scottish are kilts and sporrans and heroin these days, thanks to Irvin Walsh. <laughs> As you can see, there's some great, um, there's a great bilinear filtering line just here, or trilinear, or whatever it is, but when it switches between the two modes of filtering, that's pretty old school. But yeah, we're sort of blast blasting along now at this train's top speed. We will be at Falkirk at 10.35, or else, well, or else we'll be late. Basically, that's, that's it. Um, we'll lose points, we'll lose our dignity, but realistically, it's probably not going to kill anybody if we're late. And that's the kind of attitude that prevails across the British railways all the time, and it is why every train is late. Nobody cares enough. If I was running the country, the trains would run on time. Put it that way. And everybody I didn't like would be in a concentration camp. Which is probably why it's a good idea I'm not running the country. Or a good thing. It's not a good idea I'm not running the country. It's a great idea that I should run the country. I'd sort all the mess out straight away. Everybody knows a, a single slightly mad dictator is the best way to run a country. Onwards. Before I embarrass myself further by speaking... Got all this lovely countryside here, all these fields and farms and ponds and lakes. The sort of parallel to the M, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, it's in Scotland. The M80, whichever motorway it is that I've just sort of clocked in the bottom right of the live map. And as I say, I'll just pop up the map for a second and probably forget later. If you see this line sort of splits in half. Um, in a bit, and sort of goes around the North Falkirk, around South Falkirk, we're going down the southern half of that split. We're at full speed now, so, oh god, it's raining again.
the old wipers going. Nothing worse than inadequate wiping of your dirty windscreen. Be able to see a thing. There's a, I suppose a farm maybe? Barns, looks like. This is all very, very scenic and pleasant. Apart from that bit where the actual houses are. Where are we coming through now? So to speak. I don't know, but we're not stopping, so it doesn't matter. Um, Falkirk is home to the Kelpies, which can be found at the Helix Park. You know, I swear, I swear blind we've done this route before. But I can't see it on the playlist. But it feels like we've done this before. Maybe I've just not labelled it or something on one of the, the, um, the streams. Um, I'm just getting huge amounts of deja vu. Uh, Falkirk is home to the Kelpies. Just two big fuck off horse statue things. Very nice. Very impressive. Um, it's also home to the Falkirk Canal. Falkirk Wheel, there it is. Falkirk Canal Lift, which lifts up barges between the Forth and Clyde Canal and the Union Canal. That's a very impressive structure, which we're going nowhere near. Because we're going through the southern part of the run, so. Yeah, shit out a lot for scenery. We're just going through countryside with trees, and that's it. Uh, trees, bushes, fields, cows, the occasional house, the occasional village clustered next to the railway line but never being served by it. All the best, best parts of Britain. All concentrated into one place. Uh, of course, motorways as well. There are motorways. Kids love a good motorway. Do matter, let the train just generally pose in that way that it poses. Or it doesn't pose, I just angle the camera, but pose is close enough. Oh, it's called Hags. I thought that town was called Haggis, and I thought that's a bit racist. Calling a town Haggis because it's in Scotland. <laughs> the M8 Zero. The M8 A Mato. Motorway. Through Castle Carey or past Castle Carey or Castle Carey or however it's pronounced, I'm waiting for it. Go on, Mepham. Miafam. Miafam. Like Oxfam. Charity dedicated to flying people out to Haiti to have sex with underage prostitutes. Ah, and feeding them and stuff as well. But mostly prostitute sex tours. It would appear, given the current papers. Castle Carey, Castle Carey, Cash and Carey. There's some sheep, but we're not in Wales, so you get spared the sheep shagging jokes. Why shag a sheep when you have a sister? The slogan goes in this part of the world. This is why nobody should watch this stream ever. It's just a stream of abuse aimed at the places we're going through. Places of which I have no knowledge. There's the line splitting off that goes around the Northern Loop. Um, I have never visited, I have no experience of. But I'm basically going to tell everyone that they're shitholes. Um, exception to this is Edinburgh, which I've been to in the last ten years. Certainly, you see their top left Falkirk wheel on the canal there, or the the um, where the two canals go past each other. Uh, the exception is Edinburgh. <laughs> I think this this is set um, mid two thousands. I think 
or certainly around that time because it's not electrified which it is now and they're slowly introducing new trains on it because new trains never get introduced smoothly they, it's always delayed by months or years because they run them down the track for the first time and they go oh shit we've not designed the train properly we're going to have to go back and refit something to them all just the way of it with trains maybe we are going to get close to the Falkirk wheel you know what <laughs> you know what let's see if we can spot it on the way past the northern part of the train line actually goes right past it it's tricky to see um, it just depends exactly how close we are on Google Maps um, let's fly across and have a look see if we can't spot a Falkirk wheel uh, no denied or is that branching off elsewhere? No, I don't think it's in here. Oh well. Unlucky. Let's go back to our train and continue on the way. Uh oh. Oh, we're coming up on Falkirk. Well, it probably makes sense if the Falkirk wheel is in the picture that we're coming up on Falkirk. That would make a lot of sense. Now, I don't know what the braking's like on this. We've got a mile and a half to brake, so let's just stop accelerating and see what that gives us. Other than just quiet and... Has it stopped raining now? i turn the wipers off. I can for now. So we're actually incredibly early. This timetable seems very generous. Maybe they're expecting something to go horribly wrong. Which is always a fair assumption when I'm driving a train. Um, but now we seem to be scrubbing off speed at 50% brakes fairly reasonably. Probably a bit too rapidly. The brakes off and throttle up a little bit again. Which you can remind me of in a minute when we end up halfway off the end of the platform. The Falkirk Golf Club. Falkirk Town Centre. Unless Falkirk's a city. Probably not though, is it? It's probably a town. It's just Edinburgh and Glasgow, isn't it? In Scotland. Oh no, there's loads of cities, aren't there? What am I even talking about? Ignore me. Foolish fool. It's just that Edinburgh and Glasgow are the biggest ones. Alright. More brakes. I can see the platforms now. I can see the whites of their eyes. Or well, certainly the whites of the lines painted alongside the edge of the platform to try and get people to stand back from the edge so they don't get sucked off by a passing train. Why I always stand right on the edge of the platform. But I've got like two minutes to get into the platform and stop the train in a proper position so uh, there's not really any excuse if I fail to do that is there other than I'm really cack handed at driving the train oh brakes are on uh, it says six car stop there so let's try and stop there next to the six car stop sign come on Brakes off, you prick. Let me just nudge forward. I've got like an entire two minutes to fuck around and get this lined up properly. Okay, and stop, and the doors are open. Let's have a look around Falkirk environment. Well, Falkirk High. First station, Falkirk High, as it says. Here's our train. It's half Scotrail and half first Scotrail and Scotrail livery. And. Uh, yeah, it's not operated by first anymore, is it? Or is it? I can't remember. I think it's a babio now, isn't it? Dutch Railways. There's a lady wearing a very appropriate, inappropriate, very appropriate, very inappropriate set of clothing for this part of the world at this time of year. She must be very cold. And you come out and there's not even tarmac on the road. It's just dirt track that someone's painted um, chalk lines along. There's Volker with its endlessly repeating texture on the um, stone wall and this is probably actually reasonably nicely modelled up until you get to here and it sort of just traps out you can see the houses and the tower blocks fairly close to the railway normally you would just see the houses over the railway and you'd see these next to the railway and that's all you'd need you know you'd sort of just peek out the side and look over the fence and that's all the scenery you really need this one 
again, I'm sure we've done this before, as I say, is um, optimised to within an inch of its life. Um, basically, it's an extremely narrow corridor. Um, oh, there is more stuff over there. There must be another line passing by over there for all that to be there. Yes, there is. That must be the, another one of the Falkirk stations. What one's that one? Grahamston. So this is the one that's meant to be near the wheel. This part of track. Maybe they're going to blag it and say that the wheel hadn't been built when this is set. I would imagine that would be a good blag. But it's one. It's these. It's where these canals meet. A couple of canals and where they meet, the wheel's meant to be. Ages yet on the old time to mess around. I doubt it's. I doubt it has been included. It may be that I just set this one up. Um, I never got around to doing it. So that's everybody travel sick for flying around. And just generally looking around. Successful stop train ready to proceed to Palmont. 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 Whatever. The next stop on the line. That's only three and a bit miles away. This, this first hop is the sort of longest hop between Glasgow and Falkirk. And then you can see on the timetable the rest of them are a bit more closely spaced. Delicious coffee. Makes the world go round. Pole mount. Mount your pole. An impressive pole for sure. And through the tunnel. With the high quality environmental audio effects. Going full blast. Listen to that. Just like being on a real train in the tunnel. Exactly the same thing. There's nothing really for me to do while we're in here. Um, other than just make sure we don't go over 95 miles an hour, which with the speed this train accelerates isn't a problem. It's not going to go over 99, 95 miles an hour unless I give it another 10 minutes. That's all good. Now this tunnel probably has a name, so let's have a look on the Wikipedos to see if it says anything about what the tunnel's called. Oh, we're out of it now, who cares? Uh, oh. I've got Falker at the place, not Falker at the fucking station now. That's no help, is it? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 uh. Now I've got the wrong Falkirk station. That's it, we're back, we're back now. This is, this is how it should be. Me not really looking at the train, going past the red signal while I'm trying to read out something on Wikipedia that nobody cares about and adds nothing to the stream at all. That's what it's all about. Sorry again about the buffering, I've murdered whatever it was that was, um... Uh, I've killed whatever it was that was, um... Frame... Messing with the frame rate. The mess with the CPU. Uh, I'm not sure what else it could be. One of a guess. No, no idea. Oh, I wonder. Maybe one of my entirely legitimate files is uploading for some reason. Uh, huh. See, normally that's not a problem, but apparently today it is. Right, that should fix it. Um, just in time for me to come back and not exceed 90 miles per hour past the speed limit, so that's good. It's always nice to not completely fucking fail. Uh, oh, yeah, Palmont's there, isn't it? Probably stop there. <laughs> In the true spirit of this stream, mentioning completely failing and then failing to see the station is coming up while I'm accelerating towards it. So, let's see how long the platform is at Palmont and let's see how many coaches are left in the platform when this train finally comes to a halt. I think we should be okay because the train's six coaches. 
but it's not going to be a tidy stop. I have lost a couple of points for the emergency brakes. But the good news is I worked out why you keep getting buffering, so you shouldn't get that anymore. Better open the doors, eh? And the good news is we're early because, you know, there's there's late braking and then there's what I just did, which is braking far too late. That's not too bad by my standards. Look, that's only a coach and a half out the, out the station. I was expecting the back half of the train to be my saviour. Um, but, yeah, no, that's that's not too bad by usual standards. This train has good brakes. Um, yeah, everybody else on the train probably has whiplash um, at best, if not, as Bodie says, if not broken necks. Um, so, yeah, there's not a lot here uh, by way of town or village or town at Parliament. Um, there's a bridge, which apparently is just a dirt track, according to this. I, I suspect it's probably not. Like, we've come past... Oh, that's where the junction comes back in from Falkirk. That other loop through Falkirk. Uh, yeah. Hey, by my standards, that is like a glove. That's not bad. Is this cunt's fault? Look at him. He doesn't care. He's just giving everybody on the train serious injuries doing that. And he does not give a shit. He's smug as ever. Uh, point, pointing upwards in excitement. Nothing to do with me. It was his inattention at the train driving controls that caused that emergency braking incident. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. That and me trying to work out why I was buffering. And it turns out it's because I hadn't turned something off that I normally remember to turn off because... These are becoming infrequent and irregular events at the moment because shit's going on and I don't feel like doing them. And but tonight I kind of feel like doing one, so we're doing one. We're doing the trains. What more could you ask for other than something interesting to watch? We want the moon on a stick. Something interesting to watch. Just begin to take these brakes off. So when I do this, it actually can start to pull away. Not raining anymore. No, it isn't statues of pictures of penises in states of erection. It's artificial resuscitation in the event of an electric shock. Or manual resuscitation. Artificial resuscitation? I don't know what you'd call it. Yeah. There's a somewhat lower res version of it that you see from the cab view. That cuts down on memory use and, and the like, but yeah, you can see here in electric shock, first aid, open the airway, give him a kiss, pop your knob in, then roll him over and go for the back door. Oh, I, I, I game plan, I was on time. I was on time, I was just a coach and a half out of the platform, and I lost a load of points for the emergency braking event, um, which obviously like most emergency braking events that involved me, was due to me not paying attention. Um, Palmont is a stage... Oh, it's a village, Palmont, apparently. That's how it's even pronounced. A population of 5,000. Did he get to his own railway station with trains stopping there, allowing people to go to Edinburgh or Glasgow? Not bad. Not bad. Doing well for yourself there, Palmont. For some reason I thought it was some sort of depot at Pullman, but I'm thinking of Palmady. Palmady? Palmady? However it's pronounced. There's a depot there, though. I think mean, that was West Coast Main Line. Yeah, there's nothing at Pullman. There's a village. Some train tracks. Uh, next stop, Linlithgow. Linlithgow? Linlithgow? Linlithgow. Uh, as Wagyu says, it has a palace. It has a big impressive palace. The train station looks very impressive and fancy. And I'm sure precisely none of that is going to be reflected in the actual state of the place when we get there. It looks a bit rough on the train simulator, I would imagine. Okay. Um, fun fact about... Um, Lilnith, Linlithgow, Linlithgow, 
The um, the first citation on the Wikipedia page is for a report by R V J Butt B U W T. The Directory of Railway Stations details about every public and private railway station, uh, over every public and private passenger station halt platform and stopping place, past and present, first edition, 1995. It's R V J Butt. Check that out if you get a chance. Don't know why you'd ever have a chance. Oh, hang on. Yellow signal. Double yellow. 90 mile an hour limit anyway, so I'm going to have to... Just... Back off on the accelerator. I don't... Why would I... I I've not shut up about Blackpool on Twitter all afternoon. All yesterday and today and Saturday, so... You don't need to hear about Blackpool. I'm bored of... Telling people about Blackpool. It's boring. Leave me alone. But it was cool. So I should probably really probably should break quite hard because that signal might be red. Um Blackpool's cool, there were lots of games to play, lots of old arcade machines, a lot of classic games machines. There was a big trade hall full of software and hardware that was probably overpriced versus eBay, but for the convenience of just buying it there and then and potentially, you know, knowing what trader or shop it comes from was probably fine um, and there was other, other things being sold there like artwork and craftsy stuff to do with games um, there was a room where talks were being held so Mr Biffo um, and I watched the Oliver Twins we got to talk about Dizzy and I watched uh, Steve Hammond and Mike Daly from DMA who sort of created Lemmings no I didn't buy a box Neo Geo I saw somebody else buy a box Neo Geo and winced because that was probably quite expensive but probably not as expensive as the games would cost for it unless there's some sort of SD card thing out for the Neo Geo hardware which these days who knows there might be but yeah it was it was held in the Norbrecht Castle which is an interesting place it looks like it's basically not been done up or renovated since it was built, or the extensions were built. Uh, there was bingo and cabaret every night there. Um, and yeah, as you know, talked to lots of cool people. Lots of interesting people. Uh, as well as Mr. Biffo, Ashens, Kim Justice, DJ Slope from Slope's Gaming Room, I think he said. And um, Nostalgia Nerd briefly said hello to. And, you know, I'm just dropping all these names as if I knew them or said more than two words to them, which is not quite true. And then there was all the sort of found footage of Xenox crew there as well. Um, so hello to everybody there if you're watching. And also I told you not to watch because it's tedious and horrendous, so what are you doing? And, yeah, there we go. That, that was it. I went, played some games, um, spoke to some people, met some people. Listen to some talks, eat lots of chips and just general shit. And then came home. Very tired, but quite happy. Um so oh yeah. So here we are in uh Linlithgow, Linlithgow. And as promised, here is the fancy that's not the fancy station. Where's this fancy station building? Is that meant to be it? Oh that is meant to be it. That's that looks a lot fancier on the um, the Wikipedia picture, I have to say. I wonder if the bin's there on the Wikipedia picture. No, it's not. The bin is an addition uh, for artistic license. And also, this is missing signs on the side. A big sign at the top. And a great big thing. The notifica notification, information board. But it has gained a wheelie bin, so... Pff. You know, you win some, you lose some. But unlike previously, the train is actually in the platform, so that's nice. It's a good start. Oh, there's a billboard. We all have a billboard. Activity rent-a-car. Car and van rental. No idea who they're um, meant to be ripping off. The eastbound station is at first floor. The westbound station is at street level. Oh, yeah. So it is. So you'd have to go into the station building and climb up some steps to get to it from that side. But on that side, it's just street level. 
Well, sort of street level. I mean, the road then goes down and round the hill. Hmm, fair enough. So there's your Enterprise rent a car rip off. There's a man wondering where he's trained towards. Um, oh, he's not wondering. I thought he was looking at his watch, but he's just got his arms folded in disgust. Here's another man. I mean, I assume dressed like that, he's going to a court hearing where he will be imprisoned. Uh, next stop is Haymarket, which is in Edinburgh. Generally just gets called Haymarket rather than Edinburgh Haymarket. Uh, the palace, so, right, okay, so the palace should be over here on the left, shouldn't it? According to they might have ducked out of modelling it. Oh no, there it is, there you go. They did, they, it was, unfortunately for them, it was too close to the railway to get away with not doing. I assume that's, um, Linlithgow Palace. But if it's not, then I'm very sorry, but that's the most likely candidate. Anyways, that's it. The old engines are revving away. Let's see how close to 100 miles an hour we can get before we get to Edinburgh and Haymarket Station. So yeah, so like I say, Haymarket is generally just known as Haymarket, even though it's like just up the road from Edinburgh's main station, Edinburgh Waverley. Most things tend to just stop here. Oh, it's official, it's official name is Haymarket as well, so... Oh, get ready to unzip, there's a Class 37 up ahead. Or oh, two Class 37s, pardon me. In a red livery. There we go. There's some claggy throbbers for you. The siding with the car train. That's probably what we were following. Um, or we would have been following if I was driving the train a little more quickly and actually catching up to them. Yeah, it's the Haymarket's in Edinburgh. And we, we all know what Edinburgh is, don't we? It's the city of Scotland. Yeah, got a castle, yeah, and various other things, and it's got a an old town, and it's got a new town, which is sort of mostly Georgia, and it's got a big hill called Arthur's Seat. So yeah, there you go. That, that's all you need to know about Edinburgh, that's all anybody needs to know about Edinburgh. Oh, they have a festival every year, and they also have a fringe festival every year, which is like a load of comedy. The, the place just gets filled up with comedy wanks and also funny comedians and you have to tell the difference between the two that's that's your um, that's your challenge but yeah that's, that's everything you need to know about Edinburgh in a nutshell but we don't need to know about Edinburgh just yet we're out in a field in the middle of the excuse me Scottish countryside and a lively skag scene, obviously. Plane spotting was set in Edinburgh. And as lovely and fancy as the centre of Edinburgh is, there are also other suburbs of Edinburgh available. In much the same way that, that Glasgow is near Paisley. Edinburgh is near Leith. Leith? Have I got that right? Probably not. That's the one I remember. Wherever it is, anyway, it's an old rundown neighbourhood by the docks where all the poor people live. And when I say poor people, I mean Scottish poor people, but I mean really fucking poor people. These poor bastards don't have a penny to rub together. Oh god, I'm so middle class, it's painful sometimes. Looking down my nose at the poor people. I, 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 my brain just didn't go for the politically correct term, so you're just going to have to deal with the fact that I'm a terrible right-wing conservative tonight. I've personally killed all the babies, and I'm worse than Hitler. Mm, nice little railway cutting here. We're going to have to moderate our speed a little bit, because there's an 80 mile per hour limit coming up. Which is always fun. There's probably a station right after it as well, but I've just forgotten, and I'm going to have to put the emergency brakes on. Just making our way through, it's cutting. They've got a lot of um, reinforcement. They've built up a lot of reinforcement walls here to retaining walls. That's what I'm looking for. Retaining walls. Check out the buttresses on this bastard. 
Buttress to the bollocks. And we go through another road bridge over the road, but we're doing 80, so that's fine. Looks like the curve tightens up here, so that's what we're slowing down for. Don't want to cause any passengers injuries. Well, any passengers who are still alive after the little whiplash incident that I just caused. It's nothing but the sound of the windscreen wipers slowly click clacking across to keep us company. Up here, the engine idling if we go outside, I suppose. Up go the revs. And into the tunnel we go. And let's get out of the tunnel. We can go up to 90. 90 miles an hour. I have a sneaking suspicion that might be relatively fast compared to what's coming, but we'll see. Um, I have driven this route before. There's another route that I haven't driven that comes after this. That might be interesting, but we'll see. Got to get to Edinburgh first. Got to not pass any red signals. And still another 10 miles to go yet, so... Plenty of opportunity for me to fuck it completely. And end up with a game over. i just quickly look on the map. As you can see, we're sort of going downwards now towards Broxbourne. And then we'll curve around. Stop. Fuck off. Stupid map. And then we'll curve back round as we are doing now and then head back towards Edinburgh. More directly. The um, the ones on the London Brighton line with the little um, crenellated turrets are quite interesting. Tunnel portals at the Brighton end. They're quite fancy. I don't know what... Why do I have to sound the horn going over a bridge? Is there a level crossing right at the other end of it or what? Or a foot crossing? Maybe it's to warn anybody if they're on the bridge to jump off it because the train's coming. Who knows? Uh, this looks like it might be some... Oh yeah. Some hot viaduct action. With some not really very textured field underneath because hey, you're up on a viaduct. Fuck you. You don't deserve textures. Higher than like 30 by 30 resolution plus a load of blurring from the filtering. Oh, nice motorway junction. Hey, it's probably a horrific motorway junction to drive around. I don't know, but... You know, it's, it's got all the swirly loopy bits on the map, so nice motorway junction. Uh, bits of electrification coming in now, so we must be getting closer to Edinburgh. Uh, Ratho, I assume, is... Ratho? Ratho? Whatever it is, we're going past that. Um, we're not going to the golf club, though, and yeah, here's the electrification now. Out of the airports there, is it? Okay. In Bright Airport. But yeah, it's it's sort of all electrified now, all the way down. Um, in the modern day. And they're slowly introducing trains to the route. Obviously, it probably helps with the, um, with the climb out of Queen Street, because the trains will be lighter and more powerful compared to their weight. Like these things that have to lug around whacking great diesel engines and fuel and all the rest of that shit. So at the moment it's a mixture of these and the electric trains running the line. It will eventually just be the electrics. Uh, yeah, and in, in historically there's been all sorts of all sorts of um all sorts of trains running back and forth on this line. Um it's, it was loco hauled for quite a good while. Um Uh, back in, well, obviously, during the days of steam, everything was loco hauled, pretty much, but, um... Oops. I'm just trying to find a Wikipedia file citation to prove that fact. I was just going to go through exactly what type of haulage it was. Yeah, we've sort of passed the airport now, so we don't need to duck. Hermiston. 
So in the 50s and 60s, uh, in 1956, they introduced the Class 126DMU, which probably looks like the Class 101, I would imagine. Fairly similar. Um, then they went for locomotives, 25, 27 and 37. There you go, there's your Class 37 again. Uh, with a... Oh no, okay. Uh, the, the local at each end, and they were sort of wide through. And then they went to a push-pull system uh, with Class 47s and a driving car at the other end. And then in the 1980s, Class 158, Class 156. And then during the late 90s, these Turbo Stars got built. And they've been running it ever since. Until now, when they're being phased out. But that's fine, because... A hell of a lot of paces needs to be gotten rid of from the line this year and next year. From, well, from all lines, so... Bringing these up, obviously, means they can go elsewhere. Make somebody else's life a misery. But not as miserable as the fucking paces made everybody's lives. But I think at some point we do actually go past Murrayfield Stadium on this route. If we've not already done it and I missed it. Oh, excuse me. BT Murrayfield. Give it its official title. It was only a couple of miles into Haymarket, so it'll have to happen soon. <laughs> the pump cart is an upgrade from a pacer. Oh, this is it up here, isn't it? There it is. That's a refill anyway. There's not much else um, of that sort of size and scale around Edinburgh, I don't think. Unless it's Hearts' stadium. I doubt it. It looks a bit big for that, eh? I should really know. Because, like, all the rugby's on at the moment. Uh, it's all the rugby posts outside, just to give you an idea. Yes, that'll be more you feel. Fair enough. Oops. <laughs> huh. Yeah, somebody didn't cancel the warning for the speed. Um, for the speed. So, yeah, fucked it. That, that, that's the only way to say it. Fucked it. We're now going to emergency break down to a halt. And probably be late into Haymarket. I was trying to work out what stadium that was and wasn't looking in the cab. We're back to the best. We're back to our best. Back to back to usual service. Usual service is resumed. Miss, Mr. PSB drives the train very badly. Come on. Oh, the fucking reverse has been set as well. Yeah. <laughs> Off we go. Off we go again. But here goes a Haymarket, there's Haymarket train maintenance depot. They sort of maintain the diesel stuff at the moment. I don't know if they've changed that to maintaining the electric stuff now or what. Or if they've probably built a new depot somewhere for those. That's how it usually goes. Like you've got a HST coming the other way. More on that later. Entity hint, hint, hint. The old um, National Express East Coast colours before Virgin took over and repainted it all. And now they're fucking getting told to fuck off as well for being shit cons. Is often the way with Virgin, the same way they got told to fuck off from cross country for being shit cons. Yeah, no, you, you're going to have to reduce the amount of um, records that you're requesting there, otherwise it's going to time out. This is probably fuckery as well, unless I get the brakes on hard. Hard and fast. As you can see, we're coming into Haymarket. And I'm not really watching what I'm doing. I'm reading the chat, which is always a good way to drive a train. Don't worry. It'll be Valenta Wine later on. There we go. Here we are, Haymarket Station, and we're still on time, even though I ground to a crashing halt. They're not cancelling an AWS warning, which means basically it's a timetable, a load of shit. 
it needs redoing based on real life timings, which is still quite generous. But not quite as generous as this, where you can completely fuck it and still be on time. So there we go. Falkirk. Bishop Briggs we went through and didn't stop at. Palmont. Linlith, Lith, Lith, Linlith Gal. Linlith Gal, Lin, 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 Lin. Uh, and Edinburgh. Edinburgh Haymarket. And soon to be Edinburgh Waverley. I should probably not say soon to be because that's just tempting fate. With it being the last station, there's probably be a red signal between me and there. And we all know how that ends up. Uh, just have a quick look around. Like I say, this is optimised with an inch of its life. So if you're expecting to see the whole bustling metropolis of Edinburgh, lol, no. You get some houses nearby, um, some buildings, and yeah, no, that's your lot. Basically, that's that's Edinburgh. Well, certainly Edinburgh around Haymarket, as it's bottled. You might be able to see just over here on the horizon. Um, as you come back out of the tunnels... There's a bit more Edinburgh over here, but not much. We'll see that when we get over to Waverley, which is more central um, in Edinburgh. Train ready to proceed to Edinburgh Waverley. 160 points. <laughs> Will we get that coveted bronzy? Not sure who it's coveted by. Probably me, because it's best that can be hoped for um, given the circumstances that circumstance being I'm driving the train choo 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 but with diesel instead of choo choo so as you can see I'm in the middle of it there's all sorts there's a castle, there's a university of Edinburgh there's a national museum of Scotland there's a National Portrait Gallery, there's Holyrood, which is the sort of um, Scottish Parliament building. I think Holyrood, there's Holyrood House as well, which is the Queen's House. When she stays in Edinburgh. Those buffers are just... Oh no, we are coming into the a bay platform. Edinburgh Waverley has the most confusingly numbered platforms in the world, perhaps. Um, there's like platform two is like next next to platform nineteen. It's, I think they they must be numbered clockwise or something. There's like some really long three platforms, but they use both sides of those as two different platforms. And then there's a load of bay platforms, and we'll see anyway. I'll, I'll show you when we get in what the platform numbering looks like. It looks like a fucking mess. I've spoilt it already. Need to slow down to twenty now. It looks like we're going to get bounced across some points probably, and just. Generally because we're coming into a set of buffers anyway, it's always good to be not going too fast in case you run into them and kill all your passengers. That's seen as a bit of a faux pas in train driving circles, killing all the passengers. Generally that will get you at least a, um, a verbal warning, if not a written one. If it was your fault, obviously, if the track just like fucks then... You might just get off, with, get off with a bit of a meeting and a, a chat. The Edinburgh Old Town, and there's Edinburgh New Town, and then it's just Edinburgh basically. Welcome to the Scottish capital. So they've got that building up there, which is like part. Of, can't remember if that's part of the station building or not. AWS isn't active inside the station. It just says, "Three to platform 14." Yellow signal here, so no signals to worry about now until we get to the end of the platform. But here's all the um, these are the platforms opening up. Come in there, and you can just about see that's. I think that's meant to be the castle, or is that meant to be the castle? No, I think that's meant to be the castle there. Yeah, up on the hill. But, I mean, you know. Say so that's meant to be the castle, or that's meant to be the the Edinburgh scenery, and yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit flat, and uninspiring, and I should probably stop at these buffer stops. <laughs> no emergency brake, me you prick! I was braking. It's not fast and hard enough, obviously. So there, there is some protection there to stop you running into the buffer stops, 
um, in the form of these TPWS grids that detect whether you're going too fast and then whack the emergency brake on if you are. Which I was, in fairness, I was. So, yeah, like platform numbering, look, there's an HS2, is that about to pull out? I don't know. Not daddy driving that one, it's a man with a bowl cut and a potato face. Yeah, so there's platform 12, platform 11, that's all perfectly logical and simple. There's platform 10, yeah, that's fine, that all makes sense. So that's platform 11, and then you get down here, and oh no, that's platform 7 now. Come over here, and that's platform 3, 4, 5, that's all fine. It all makes perfect sense, but yeah, it's a bit... Oh, is it over here it goes to fuck? That's 9... Eight and nine. Okay, that makes sense. It goes to fuck somewhere. Uh, I'll show you on the next scenario because we're starting off at Edinburgh. Um, well done. That was a successful drive. It's time to head to um, Krusty Supper for some um, some supper or the chemist called chemist. Or maybe you can go to Co Coffee Hero. Cafe Nero, Coffee Hero. Completely different. But yeah, this is all fairly reasonably representative of Edinburgh, Waverley. Um, and here's a man doing the weather, and that's actually Sean Connery, isn't it? <laughs> you fucking dicks. Look at the state of that, honestly. <sighs> dear, oh dear. Well, there you go. We'll, we'll, we'll leave you with that image of Sean Connery doing the weather. If it isn't Sean Connery, it's meant to be, isn't it? It's very obviously meant to be. The man that looks quite like a fucking silver star. That's very generous. Hey, oh, you're an 87. Okay. Fair enough. So, yeah. As per usual, Swerry Train Simulator. On time, on time. Emergency brake! I was into uh, Parliament. And then we stopped at Parliament. And then fucked it. Didn't spot the um, AWS warning for the slow signal. And then didn't slow down fast enough for the buffer stops at Waverley. So yeah, just 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 the usual, just a screen full of emergency brake, no biggie. So the next scenario we're going to do is a standard one, so there is no point scoring to worry about. It's just a nice leisurely cruise. All we have to worry about is red signals, um, and going too fast around curves and derailing, and just generally, you know, fucking it. So we want J for Just Trains because they did it. Scottish East Coast Mainline and Stock 2 is the one I've tinkered with. And off we go again. So the map probably won't move that much when this loads in. Um, because it's, like I say, we're starting back at Edinburgh Waverley. But it's a bit more detailed because it's a different route. And you'll see that as well in a minute. Um, not changing. Obviously, you can see we've got H, we've got an HST. And I'm going to pause it there because we're actually basically to, just to set off immediately. Um, there's Daddy driving a different um, class 170, and indeed we have Daddy at the controls at this time as well. So we're in his capable hands. Um, that must be Daddy's evil brother. Uh, so yeah, again, Waverley Station, albeit rendered by a slightly different team. Um, and I think this is where the platform fuckery might come in. Yes. So you've got platform 2 and platform 19. The one in this platform 2, the other in this platform 19. Next to platform 19, you've got platform whatever this is. 18. All right, that makes more sense. It might be down here where 19 is next to platform 4 or something. Anyway, it's a bit messy. Even though it looks logical now, I'm actually trying to explain why it's messy. And you've got a road down here as well that cars can sort of drive down and drive around. And it's just a big old station down a ramp. So there we go. The just trains are just advertising themselves now. Scottish Railways RW decal. Okay. Well, I think that's a tool or something. Not the same without Sean Connery doing the weather though, is it? If we're honest with ourselves. Um, and the signs are a bit more up to date and looking a bit more Scott Rarely. Um, what well, uh, Sean Connery was up here, wasn't he? I don't know. Uh, and in terms of what Edinburgh looks like in this, you can see there's a lot more detail. Um, there's actual buildings, there's stuff up on the hill, so that's Edinburgh Castle. 
and they've actually sort of modelled Edinburgh Castle instead of just pasting on a flat bitmap. And there's Waverley Station, and you can see the building. Um, they've sort of tried to model there as you come into Waverley. Is that the right direction? There's like a stage there with some sort of event going on. Look at the coloured lighting. Wow, that was really impressive. Wake 2 circa God knows what time. Uh, yeah, so there you go. There's Edinburgh, all lo lovingly modelled. Oh, is we, do we go this way out? That's Arthur's seat, isn't it? Okay, anyway, enough enough sightseeing around Edinburgh. Edinburgh. What we need to do is uh, get into the train and drive... Well, no, don't put the emergency brakes on. Uh, get into the train, put the lights on. And go. And off we go. But not go too fast. Because... Speed limit's only 20. Oh, so you platform platform two gives way to platform nineteen. Just silly. There's your HST powering up the turbo coin into play. And generally making all the good noises that HSTs make. Make the volume up a bit. There you go, there's that whistle going. There's me trying to Oh no, I'm I managed to get it just in time. And there's another one heading out. Give it the tiniest nudge of break. And we need to put the wipers on. And yeah, I mean, you all know the City 125, HST, Class 43, whatever you want to call it. We've all been in it numerous times now on the stream. Built in the 1970s as a proven technology version of a high speed train using diesel rather than electric. Um, as compared to the APT that was basically stuffed to the gills with new technology and despite being the train of the future wasn't allowed to be the train of the future and was killed because they couldn't make it all work in time and in budget. That's it now, that's the fastest that we go, 20 miles an hour. So we're actually heading back the way we came now, back towards Haymarket. Um, but after Haymarket we're not heading back on down the Glasgow line, we're going to head north. We're actually going, if I throw the map up while we're just sort of trundling along, is up to Dundee. So we'll go from Edinburgh, across the Forth Bridge, up by Kirkcaldy, and then across the Tay Bridge, and well, the Tay Railway Bridge, and then into Dundee. That'll be interesting. Probably. Don't know. Don't care if it's not, that's what we're doing. You'll just have to suck it. Yeah, that's a bit loud now. I can't really hear myself think. As entertaining as that sound is, it's just a bit much. Um, even if you can hear me over it, I can't hear myself thinking over it. 35 miles an hour, let's go! And now with the reverb, it's even worse. Bring that down another notch. But let's not go too quick, because we do need to stop at Haymarket. Can't forget that. And I mean, lots of trains basically follow this pattern of um, they leave Waverley and then stop at Haymarket, which is like three quarters of a mile up the track, and then they piss off to whatever destination they're pissing off to. Um, and indeed, when I went to Edinburgh on the train the last time I did it, same thing, stopped at Haymarket, three quarters of a mile, stopped at Waverley, where the train terminated. Thing. Might be going further north. No, I think it was going to just to go to Edinburgh. What an exciting story for everybody. Uh, just put a tweaker brake on. We're in a much longer and a much heavier train now. And the whole emergency braking and getting most of it on the platform thing is not quite as certain as once it was. So let's just. Be a little bit careful as we creep up to the end of the platform at Haymarket. And you see 170s, HSTs, there's all sorts going on. Six coaches? No, we've got more than that, mate. Let's pop the brakes on. We'll probably get most of these coaches in the platform if we're careful. 
And there were the AWS magnet, the way is clear. That's fine, because that's just doesn't matter. The power car hanging off the other end. Open the doors. Oh, we've successfully stopped at Edinburgh Waverley. Yeah, that's not on the platform at all. That's still halfway down the bloody tunnel. But it doesn't matter, because um, the next coach is on the platform, according to the hood, even though, actually, it's nowhere fucking near. And mind you, that, does, that door doesn't need to open. And they're all in different colours because of the time period it's set when they're all being slowly repainted and redone. Anyway, that's that. That's 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 Haymarket. So again, just a quick look around Haymarket. There, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, houses, yep. Yeah. Great big fucking building, lovely. I don't know what that's meant to be. And then you can see back towards the tunnels there. Rail simulator. Just train rail simulator is the old one of the old names for it. Might be the original name for it actually. I think it's Rail Simulator maybe, and then Railworks. And then Railworks 3 Train Simulator, and then. Whatever. Let's go. Next stop, Inverkeething. In Platform 2, HST stop. That could be interesting. I have to stop in a particular place. Uh, 12 miles. Come on, let's get some speed going. The brake is off. Yes, the brake is off. Good. That's a really good thing to check. Just in case. And there goes the the engines. Spinning up, turbochargers coming into play. And then suddenly, once they get spun up, it all starts moving. Nice bit of um, grime modelled on the front there. Is that meant to be like specular lighting or bump mapping? Well, it just makes it look dirty, which is fine because they are dirty. Dirty train, dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty train. And again, there's the train maintenance depot. And I'm not going to look at the stadium or speculate what it's called because that caused all sorts of issues last time. But I have to say, it's a big stadium. It's got a, got a logo on it now. Haymarket Depot, look there, yeah. Not seeing this livery? What, the, the one that's on this train? This is the National Express, or you can see on the coach, the National Express there, logo. Uh, National Express East Coast livery. National Express East Coast was a fairly short-lived franchise. They basically fucked up their calculations, couldn't pay what they were meant to be paying. Yeah, that is Murrayfield, there's a big logo on it now, it says Murrayfield. Uh, couldn't pay what they were meant to be paying and handed it back to the government. And then the government ran it with a nationalised company. Uh, directly operated railways as East Coast for a while, um, and then it got the franchise got relet out to um, Virgin Stagecoach East Coast, and now they've got their sums wrong and they can't afford to pay what they said they were going to pay. Um, there's, there are other reasons as well. The infrastructure upgrades that were meant to be happening haven't happened, and therefore they're handing the franchise back in a few months apparently. And it's going to be relet again. No doubt to somebody who will immediately get their sums wrong and hand the franchise back after a couple of years, and so it will continue. It has a bit of a... Um, oh look, Jenna's depository. I hope nobody tries to shoot me in the head from up there. Um, so it's got a bit of a chequered history, certainly more recently, the, uh, the East Coast Main Line, when it's not been in nationalised hands. Um, it's been one of the sort of dodgier lines in terms of... Um, people calculating revenue on it and calculating increasing passenger flows because unlike the west coast main line it doesn't go through quite as many big population centres so the west coast main line obviously you've got Birmingham you've got loads of sorts of stops on the way up to the north through Rugby, Crew, Crew. there's a shithole for you um, Warrington, Wigan, Preston I mean, even Lancaster to an extent. That's a tight curve. I'm not surprised it slowed me down to 75. I'm surprised it's not slowed me down more. Um, past Lancaster, there's not much, but there's a lot in the sort of southern English part of it. There's Carlisle, past Lancaster, and a couple of Lake District stops, and then um, you're up into sort of Glasgow via Lockerbie, Motherwell. Anyway, so the whole, like I say, the whole. West Coast Mainland, there's a lot of big towns all the way along it and people all wanting to go from there down to London or from London up there. The East Coast Mainline, there's less big stuff alongside it, along it. you sort of got London, Peterborough, Doncaster. I mean, who gives a fuck about Doncaster, right? 
not well it's not a big place is what I'm saying it's not a huge place like a lot of the places alongside the west coast main line um, and then you know you sort of there's not really that much up there it goes up to Leeds fair enough and then past Leeds I mean again there's a great big blank space until you get to Newcastle or York um, which is a sort of it sort of splits off part of it goes to Leeds part of it goes to York uh, Newcastle it, there's a lot of big long gaps without much in between to generate revenue for passengers um, the West Coast Main Line has also had a lot more investment in it recently um, so the trains probably a bit faster Glasgow down the West Coast Main Line than Edinburgh down the East Coast um, these days so there you go uh, that's, that's why the East Coast Main Line keeps fucking up Partly because it's not got as many big population centres alongside it, and partly because people are going, oh yes, we'll give you two billion pounds a year by the end of this franchise, we're great, it'll all be fine. You can see we're coming around the other side of the airport now. Big double security fences in case anybody hops off the train and tries to um, hop onto a plane. Just scoot across and see what sort of modelling they've got in place for the airport. Like they've got the they got a runway that, that's at least as reasonable as Gatwick's. I mean, Edinburgh's not that big an airport anyway. Mostly domestic stuff, I, th I think. Um, ooh, one pause. Oh, yeah, Darlington's like East Coast Main Line. Of course. This bit's very uphill, 1 in 79. You need to slow down because there's going to be a very short, sharp 75 mile an hour blast. I wonder if that's for a bridge or something. And then 60 miles an hour in a minute. Yeah, I've actually hit the uh, the warning this time, so that's good. That's a good start. Oh, I'll give it a yeah, it's flat bridge. Usually when you see a short interval like that, it's for a, a weaker bridge or a bridge that you're not allowed to go as fast over because the bridge can't take the speed, the energy produced by the train travelling at speed across it, and so actually I probably shouldn't accelerate too much because there's a 60 mile per hour limit coming up. So what we're actually doing is we're sort of heading north and curving round. Yep, 60 miles per hour now, I can see. Um, Oh, not Glasgow, Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Dundee. So we sort of come around, curve around, head north, and then across the um, the fourth bridge, fourth railway bridge, across the Firth of Forth. Like I said, at the moment we're just going to get up there. Nice gas towers there, gasometers. Why they floodlit, I'm not quite sure. But apparently they are. Curves, bridges, viaducts, it's all not conducive to going at a very high speed. Well, the viaducts are, but they must be sort of elderly and weak or whatever, and you're not allowed to do it. Ah, nice. Campsite with a big bonfire burning next to it. That's what we like to see. York's very nice. I mean, the whole of York's quite nice. Station, the walls, the city. A very nice place. This junction, is it? There's a junction or something coming up. Whatever it is, I need to tackle it at 50 miles an hour. Or 40 if I'm on the slow. This must be the fast line. It's 40 if I'm on the other side. I know, okay, that must be for those points. It's a speed limit 60 through the station, you cunt. Oh, okay, that's what we're slowing down for. There's the bridge. That's Queensferry Station, and now 50 miles an hour over the bridge. You're not allowed to sand on the bridge. And here we go. Across the fourth railway bridge. I don't know if you wanted to drive across it or what, but apparently there's a super tanker underneath it. Interesting. This truly is quite a large bridge, as you can see. Here we go. A very famous, very famous structure in the whole of Britain. 
um, you can see it's all girders and iron and all that good shit. Um, it gave rise to the phrase painting the fourth bridge because they used to have to continually paint it basically after they got to one end um, painting it it was time to start painting it again from the other end so it's like painting the fourth bridge is like a never ending task um, that's somewhat reduced now um, because they painted it with some special long lasting paint apparently um, a while ago but painting the fourth bridge remains in the UK vernacular as an never-ending task or a never-ending test and like I say it's a very very impressive huge iron girder structure crossing the Firth of Forth you can see the background the big suspension bridge that's the road bridge that came later um, but yeah the fourth bridge itself quite an impressive feat of engineering Uh, 1882 the construction was begun and it was finished being built in 1890 so that's quite a long time ago for a bridge like that that is a lot of hard work and dead people got into it it's the world's second longest cantilever span bridge with a cantilever span of 521 meters I'm not going to speed up to 60 here because you see it rapidly goes downhill through the tunnel, just after the tunnel and there's a 40 mile per loop coming up. I'm allowed to sand again now, that's nice. Or is that saying that I should definitely be sanding? I think it's just saying that you're allowed to do it again now. So yeah, I need to make use of the brakes now because there's a 40 mile per hour limit, like I say, coming up just after that and we're going to be rolling fairly quickly. Uh, in oh, okay. That looks like a very short platform. Keep the train under control as it rolls down the hill. And he goes across the North Queen, Queen from Queen's Free to North Queen's Free, is it? Don't know, what does that say? Signal ahead. Uh, okay, this will be like not much sighting and then I've got another small bridge as we make our way around, so that's what the 40 mile an hour limit will be across this bridge. Also not allowed to sand on this bridge, so I won't do that then. Okay. Just over a road, is it? Or is it over a canal or something? Oh no. Whatever it's over, we're over it. 50 miles an hour and sanding is now allowed again. Um, sanding, I'm sure we're all aware by this point of proceedings, is um, there are little jets that can shoot sand out underneath the wheels of the, the locomotive to help it gain traction in slippery conditions. Let's not get too fast. In, in, in the key thing, platform 2 HST stop. You yeah, expect that platform to be longer. I'm going to have to hit that quite accurately with part of the train. I think any part of the train can be on it, though. It's all new to me, so... Um, opportunities for complete and utterly fucking it up are high. I've purely got what the hood says to go off, so when it all goes horribly, horribly wrong, as well as laughing, you can say, oh dear, Mr. PSB, well, you tried your best. I mean, I probably haven't done, I probably haven't been concentrating quite as hard as I should have been, but... Them's just the brakes. Obviously, we're using a high-speed train to its fullest potential here, going at 40 and 30 and 50 through the twists and turns on the far bank of the fourth bridge. <laughs> uh, the platform... Oh, it's a normal-length platform, so I don't know why it's... I guess it's just to try and force me to stop in the right place, maybe? It looks long enough to take a... Most of an HST, if not a full HST, though. So, bit of an odd one. Not seen one like this before, I don't think. It's just to try and get to stop in the right place, but I mean, it can't do anything like measuring how many coaches are on the platform or anything if it does that. 
Very odd. Well, I guess we'll roll up to in the Keithing platform to HST stop. The actual stop sign is there. I assume this is this has the locomotive hanging off the front of the platform. Here we go. We're in. The doors are open. And yeah, you know, the doors are all open. That's odd. And there's an announcement going off. Okay. Service of Penzance, so eh? I don't think I am somehow, but okay. That might be an announcement for something else. Oh, I really hope that thing has gone red because the locomotive's gone past it. Next stop, Kirkcaldy, platform 2, HST. Kirkcaldy, Kirkcaldy. Respectable stop, Get used. don't get used to it, it's not going to happen very often. So I assume they're all like this then for the HST. That can be the only um, the only explanation, I suppose. Now oh, we're now going to sort of peel off to the right. See, and on the map you can see there we sort of right on the junction and then along the coast, and then north to Kikaldi, 13 or so miles away. Which you can also hopefully see, we do get to do it at 65 miles an hour for a bit, so that's fun. We also need to just... Nice triangular junction there. With the trains from any directions going any other direction. I love a good triangular junction. It's also nice where you see where they used to be as well, but they've taken one side out of it. And like there's houses built in the middle now because it's always really blatant what they used to be maybe that's just me looking at maps around south but though where there are a few like that no kirkaldi that's what it's called that's what it's fucking been said as kirkaldi kirkaldi that's not how it's spelled it's spelled kirkaldi Kirkcaldy, okay. I'm probably saying it wrong now as well, Kirkcaldy. Kirkcaldy, Kirkcaldy, Kirkcaldy. Kirkcaldy. Doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, it's a made up place anyway, it doesn't really exist. That, that's how I'm going to justify it to myself. A little wooden sign there. I don't know what he said because I went through it past it too quickly, so. Whoa, okay, that's a bit of a reverse curve there, where it goes one way and then the other. Trains do not like reverse curves at speed, so that's probably why we're limited in speed. Which have one half the train getting centrifugal force one way, one half getting the other, and the stress on the middle potentially breaks couplings or derails the train. <laughs> Push up to 75 miles per hour like a bottom of the range DMU would do, like a pacer or a sprinter. Not even one of the good sprinters, a shit one like a class 150. <laughs> Slow down to 50 again soon. Oh, it says caution, poor edition, that sign does. That'll be interesting if I need to break in a hurry. Assuming they've modelled that, which I somewhat doubt. Because Train Simulator 2018. Or Train Simulator any year from about 2009, really. The add to the nice countryside now. The Abador, is it Abadower? Abadower suits it better. Abadour. Abadur. Oh, no, I won't be trying that accent again. Crikey. I didn't go right. 
I didn't go right at all. Dear God. I need to just slow down a bit. 50 mile per hour limit coming up. Rusty silos and a dilapidated old farmhouse. And that's just the nice buildings. Uh, so we've gone through Dalgety Bay Station, or I think. I mean, up to Abadar. Abadur. Abadaw. We ain't stopping here, though. Oh, we ain't stopping here. Yeah, it probably doesn't help that Kikal... Oh, sorry, Kikordi. Kikordi? Kikordi? Kikaldi? Is uh, horribly misspelt. A-R-C-K. No. Pretty sure it's K-O-R-K-C, isn't it? You can find out a little bit about that. So we need to get them up, just need to get them up, but yeah, Kirk Caldi. Recording. Next railway station that we're going to come up to is a place that's written Burnt Island, but I assume it's pronounced Burntisland or something. Um, and that's famous for an express passenger train pulled by a locomotive called Old Riki Old Riki that collided with the freight train isn't, isn't Old Riki the nickname for Edinburgh of old I believe very vague cloudy Edinburgh knowledge um coming back to me from my trip there when we did all sorts of walks and all the rest of it. I don't know. It, it, it could well remain raining for the rest of the way. We are in Scotland, so it is entirely legitimate for it to be continually raining. Um, I'm not quite sure about it raining with the fairly clear blue sky, but again, we are in Scotland, so that could be entirely legitimate. And good God, these curves are all over the place. And a reverse curve as well, just to really upset the train. Okay, now this can't be a comfortable route to ride. Let's put the brakes on. Burntis land, Burnt Island we're going to come through. We're going to have to do a lot of fucking twisting and turning to get in there and back out again. No wonder there's a big speed limit coming up. Look at that. You'd, you would expect that the line would just go straight across, but no, it's going to turn in and then try and curve its way back out again. Crikey. Or is it going to turn in and then go straight up the coast? It's going to turn in and then follow the coast, isn't it? I assume it made financial sense. It's not really for the twist. I think it's for this bridge more than anything. And a bit of a... bit of a sharp turn, but probably more for the bridge. Crikey. Yeah, another place we're not stopping, though. They could all fuck off here as well. You don't get proper trains. Fuck off. The lighthouse. I mean, the, there's there's like a port in the sea, like just here. Uh, there's not much space between that and the railway line. There you go. Containers and all sorts of shit. Wow, look at that. The class 37 in British Rail Green. That's a load of shit. You don't see one of those in that livery at the moment anymore. At that point of the track. It's nice to see. It's just a shame it's not on and clagging, isn't it? Banned from standing again. Crikey. Old fashioned semaphore signals as well. We're really getting outside of civilization now. Oh, that's very nice. Nice hills. So I assume we're going along the coast just to avoid having to go over or through or under these hills. And along the beach. It's quite a pretty route, actually. Even after it's been through the train simulator's engine to model it.
yeah, that was a, that was that was quite a deviation just to go through the the town. I assume it was a port or something of some importance. Ah, importance. Previously, um, for us to make that sort of a detour to go there. Maybe it's just stuff being ferried across the Firth. You know. Thirty miles an hour through the tunnel. Forty-five miles an hour when we come out of the tunnel. E, there's a lot of sleep, speeding up and slowing down. I have to be on the ball. There also seem to be AWS warnings for all of it, so that's fine. Oh, Kinghorn. There you go. Kinghorn. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Now, if you can find some prostitute reviews from Kinghorn, you've probably got the makings of some comedy gold there. I'm going to put the brakes on because we need to slow down to 30 before this tunnel. Or whatever it is. Whatever it is, you need to be going at 30 to go past. This is, looks all like holiday bungalows or whatever. It's the train going past. Caravans. Lovely. A lovely place to go and visit. In the rain. Well, this is a teensy bit downhill, but not much. Uh, Kikordi is well within our time at the moment. Should be there in plenty of time. Keep on going, only about another five, six minutes to go, and then we shall be there. <laughs> oh, I said prostitute. Oh, yes. What's that, a class 47? Unbelievable. I can't believe there are no prostitutes in this part of Scotland. Also in British Rail Green livery. Just pushing plausibility a little bit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> this is not a kid-friendly stream. It is meant to be age-limited for a reason. And that reason is I tend to say rude things a lot. And prostitute is the, probably the, the least bad thing that gets said on this stream. At any given point. So there we go, through King Horn. The Horn of Kings. And he's called Sweary Train Simulator, so, you know, there are, there are going to be the swears. As you are warned at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. I, try, I do try to be slightly responsible. I mean, I, I am mostly responsible, but in this case, you know, I don't want anybody just randomly stumbling across it that shouldn't be stumbling across it. Oh, apologies, but also, it's your own fault. <laughs> I know, I know, obviously, fewer figures must be low tonight if I've only got six down votes. It must be quiet. Obviously, it's Monday night. People have got better things to be doing on a Monday night. <laughs> Good timing. Good timing by the kids. Yeah, it's, it's after the water show. I can, I can say poo and wee and all sorts now and shit. That kind of thing. I shouldn't really exceed 65 miles an hour, though. I might even let rip with the occasional bum. Letting rip with a bum is what I'm all about. I'm probably digging up another patch of land to build a golf course. They seem to have set fire to it as well. Donald Trump. That up-to-date satire. You see there, Kikordi Golf Course. And by the giant tower blocks, obviously, we're coming into a, a really nice place. A really nice place to live. They've just built those tower blocks. They're, they're basically utopias reaching for the sky for people to live in. 
because everybody loves to live in a big tower block. Let's put all of our problems in one basket, shall we? That never hurt anybody. Oh, another stadium. Wraith Rovers, eh? Wraith Rovers. Hmm. Sorry, folks. I like I say, I think I do think there is some fuckery going on with YouTube and the chat. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly is going on with that. Um, as far as I know, like I say, it's all set up as, I, as it ever was, but they have been tinkering, so... My apologies if anything you type does get eaten. Did it pay for the pleasure of eating one of the Edinburgh prostitutes, or did it eat her for free? Yeah, same deal with Kikordi, apparently. So I'm still pronouncing the L. Bus is appearing out of nowhere, and the platform just has a stop at the end of it that I need to hit. <laughs> Uh, from what looked like a pickup from the much more successful YouTubers, they're not really high enough in YouTube either to get around their nonsense and fuckery. So I think me with my what is it, eighty odd? I think eighty might be um, eighty might be pushing it in terms of I can't remember how many subscribers I have, but it's certainly not you know even in the hundreds. Never mind the thousands or the tens of thousands or the hundreds of thousands. So. I don't think they're going to be listening to me anytime soon. Also, I don't even monetize a video, so I'm basically just at a cost to them and nothing else. Streaming my stuff on their service for free. Whether they want me to or not, or whether anybody else wants me to or not. West Side Block. And a car park. And buses like a... Whoa, okay. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> that ain't right. Bing. People's cars just appearing out of nowhere next to the station. Then, boop, gone. So there seems to be some sort of cathedral here. Looks suspiciously like a lot of the other cathedrals in other places. I don't know how legitimately modelled that is. And there seems to be the... The... Earth. Still. But yeah. Again, it's a case of... Don't look too far past the stove. We're meant to be going... Shit, shit, shit. Oh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. I mean, why are we even stopping there? That's nowhere. An HS5. Busy, busy. <laughs> a cup of tea and a catch-up. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder how old that punter is. He seems very impressed. Tea breaks. There we go, you have to get, get to do 75, get a little bit of speed up. Get out of this godforsaken place as fast as possible. Unfortunately, we'll just be going to some other godforsaken place. But it's quite nicely modelled, the, the route out of here, look. Like the warehouse and forklifts and factory fixtures and chimneys and shit. It's quite reasonable. Quite reasonable approximation of an industrial hellscape.
Lucas, Lucas, Lucas. So Kakadi is Kakadi. Is a town of former royal Burr, borough in Fife on the east coast of Scotland. Population of about fifty thousand. Fife's second largest settlement and the eleventh most populous settlement in Scotland. It's quite long, stretching along the water, ports, and all that kind of shit. Can't be bothered reading much more out. Not only the birthplace of social philosopher and economist Adam Smith, so we can blame this place for the rise of modern capitalism. Thanks, Kikordi, as if we didn't think you were enough of this shithole already. Lucas. Used to be a big RAF base. Probably isn't a big anything now, I'd imagine. I've, I've not even got the Lucas on my fucking... Oh, I have. It's just further away. I'm definitely not Scotch. I think we've... We've learnt our lesson, or I've learnt my lesson, from attempting to reproduce anything approaching, approximating a Scottish accent. It's just not going to happen. So... Let's just not even go there. So, Lucas is kind of near the um, Tay Rail Bridge. Apparently, which we shall see in great detail, I'm sure, when we get near nearer the place. Why? Why tell me to do 85 and then say no, do 60? You fucking prick! <laughs> yeah, there's. Merseyside's good for the old phlegm noises. They used to like Bazachli. 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 Or as I call it, Bazachli. Because that's how it's spelt. Now it's probably meant to be said, not Bazachli. Funny enough, that's the nearest station to Aintree Hospital, where my kidneys were being recovered after they exploded. There's a lot of light planes flying around. I do hope Nigel Farage doesn't crash into the train line and I cross the train into it and kill Nigel Farage. That would be terrible. The racist Nazi goose-stepping prick. Don't think he goes in light planes anymore. After the um, the fact that we have still haven't stopped laughing from the photos last time, he was in one and it crashed. Got a nice bit of um, hunting there across the points, oscillating back and forth as the train tries to find its way onto the straight and narrow, some sort of equilibrium. And now we can head back up towards 75 miles an hour. Which apparently is an acceptable speed for a high speed train to be going. Was it the right wing or was it a, was it a left wing conspiracy? Uh, not on this track, they're not. We're all in miles per hour because we're in the UK. On the European tracks where they use kilometres, it's all kilometres an hour. In Japan where they use kilometres, it's kilometres per hour as well. But because we're in the UK, we're operating miles and indeed yards and chains. Uh, we're all in imperial length measurements. Oh, 
Oh, twisting and turning around again. Try to make it into another station that really we could just have gone straight past. Oh yeah. But then in America you don't have like massive barriers across the crossings and stuff generally. I mean you have some with barriers but you just have like the line open and just assume that people are going to be clever enough not to walk on the fucking train line. Or drive their car onto the train line and park it there. Whereas here we're a bit more health and safety gone mad with the lines are all sort of fenced in and closed. Albeit only to stop livestock wandering onto them, not for any actual safety of people. And all the level crossings are barriered, so... Well, no, I tell a lie. Most of the level crossings are barriered. The vast majority have some form of barrier. There are some completely open level crossings, but they're very rare and on very sort of low-speed, quiet lines because they're quite dangerous. Expecting people in the UK to just stay off the railway and not chance it just because there's some lights flashing. Um, they chance it when the fucking barriers are coming down and when the barriers are fucking down on the half barrier ones. So no barriers, yeah, they would chance it as well. So yeah, any open crossing is just going to be an extremely low speed quiet line. There ain't many of them. All the quiet lines got shut down many years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's good for evolution, but it's bad for train punctuality. And potentially, what happens in the case of UK trains, like this one where it's sort of streamlined, is the car sort of gets wedged under there, the train rides up and over it bounces off the streamlining. I mean the streamlining is not particularly strong, it's only fiberglass on the HST but once it gets launched up and off the rail the whole lot follows it potentially. Ends up on its side and then you're in a whole world of trouble. American trains are also, also generally have they're generally big heavy freight trains so they have a lot more momentum behind them than UK trains even travelling at the slower speeds that they tend to travel at though so it takes them a while to stop uh, garbage trucks close enough we call them dustbin lorries or bin lorries mostly bin lorries um, but yeah, garbage trucks are recognisable. We understand that particular phrase. We're not entirely uncultured. Just mostly. Maybe that's just me. Just me, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the the long noses on the Shinkansen to reduce sort of noise are impressive. And reduce the pressure effects when they go through tunnels. Uh, piston effect. <laughs> Uh, funnily enough, I have Bethesda to train up in the air before. Um, it was on the Isle of Wight line and it was a high-speed train and I tried to take it through the tunnel at Ride, which, as obviously as you'll remember from being completely familiar with my previous stream on the Isle of Wight, is actually quite a small tunnel. The only underground stuff fits through. So the train sort of went through the tunnel sort of and then obviously collided somehow with the side of the tunnel and collision with the side of a tunnel in a confined space 
plus physics engine equals train shoots up 300 feet in the air, pushes around itself, flies around, and then drop down on the beach next to the hovercrafts um, at ride. So, it is possible to Bethesda trains up in the air. Slow down to 60 as we come through this station. Don't know what it's called. King's Kettle, maybe? Lady Bank? That's probably Lady Bank, isn't it? Lady Bank Station. 60 because we're sort of curving away. Is that sidings there? I don't know if that goes off somewhere else as well. Probably not anymore. And Lady Bank has a very. Um, potentially double entendre ish name. We'll do 75 now. See you later, Kenneth Rogers. Thank you for dropping by. More sheep. And honk on the old horn. And off we go again. Now you can see we've taken a big turn to the right. Oh, that was Neth, was it? Okay. Here's Neth. Another hash digi person. Didn't even realise. That was who that was. Should have guessed. <laughs> Hello, my future girlfriend. This is what I sound like. I am 11 years old in the... What, what grade was he in? Whatever grade it was. In New Mexico. Please PM me if you're on Yahoo Chat. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. That guy, man. He must be ankle deep in pussy by now. Just the massive fucking cojones on him to post that picture and message on the internet and become a meme before memes are even a thing. What a guy. I'm sure at some point the, there was um, probably a BuzzFeed or something that tracked him down. He probably gets sick of being tracked down. Oh, class 47 light engine coming the other way. What a guy. I was 11. 7th grade? Must be 7th grade. Be like us when we changed from um, having like 1, 2, 3, 4... One, two, three, four, five, to going between like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen years. I'm gonna do a hundred miles an hour. What am I wanking on about? What year of school it is? Go! Oh, he's gay, is he? Okay, well that's fair enough. Clearly that's why he was reduced to um, asking for girlfriends on his Geocities website on the internet. Because all the girls could actually tell that he was gay. Their, their gaydar was functioning. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised he didn't already ask me anything. But you know. That's the kind of stupid shit you do when you're young. Like you type in Mr. PSB as your screen name. And think that sounds... that Yeah, that'll do. And then like 15 years later you're still Mr. PSB. Well, more than 15 years now, Christ. However long it's been. A long time. A long time. Yeah, I need to get rid of some of this speed. More than that. More than that. Come on. Break, 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 break. Break. Thank you. Oof, that was still a bit rough, even at 75. We got rid of that, and we might be coming off the track. We need to be doing 60, then we need to be doing 55, and it's all getting twisty-turny as we come towards is that Koopa. Koopa! I don't know why it's buffering now, sorry. I've, I have no things left to turn off. CPU usage looks fine. Sorry. I know. I know. It's just bollocks, isn't it? 
No, it must just be Wagyu and his shitty Swiss internet then. Get some more bandwidth, Wagyu. If you can't handle my 6 megabit a second upstream, then, then just kill yourself. Basically. Now, having said that, Chinny's not here to complain about it being slow on his end because he's got a potato instead of an internet connection, so. Could be worse. Luchars, or toilet characters, as I'm going to refer to it now. But only like once, because it's not actually that funny, so. Hey, we're twisting and we're turning round and round here. You know, when you design a railway, you should make it fucking straight. Because if you put all these curves in, the trains can't go as fast round it. And it's uncomfortable for the passengers, because they're getting chucked from side to side. Even with the train going at this reduced speed. That's probably the first time tonight I've actually shown any actual genuine concern for the comfort of the passenger. With my usual emergency braking showing somewhat less concern for the comfort of their vertebrae. 85? Where was the 85 mile per hour sign? Ay ay ay, I'm going to be late at this rate. Time to white rabbit it into the station. Come on, come on, you can do it again. A little bit harsh around that corner. The physics simulation is upset. Alright, that'll be trying to say the word simulation again. The physics simulation is obviously having problems at this point. The physics. Um. Trying to remember when I first came online. No, not when I first came online. It must have been about 96. So yeah, it's over 20 years. It's like 20... 21 and a bit years, going up for 22. Ooh, bit of speeding, doesn't matter, we're in standard mode, who cares. Yeah, must be about 22. That's not including the occasional lunchtime I spent on the um, school's computer looking up Pet Shop Boys news on a website. No, it would have been me if it was Mr. PSB around that era. Oh, speeding. Because we were on AOL for a month using Mr. PSB, and then I used Mr. PSB at our demon domain name as my email address. So if it was Mr. PSB, it was most likely me at that point. The the other fake Mr. PSBs have come along a lot later than that. Um, there we go, Lucas. Toilet characters is coming up upon us. And it's not one of those weird stop the HST here, it's an actual proper platform stop, so that's nice. The John Deere tractor there. That's a nice little ramble through countryside, it's just a shame it's pissing down. Really, but that's what you get for driving a train in Scotland, or just generally being in Scotland. I'm willing to slow down some more, but we're going to slow down a bit more than that anyway get into the platform and to stop. Still reasonably on time. Give or take a bit. God damn it, bloody map's not loaded. Come on you fucker. Wank. 
Okay. And the map stopped updating, so it all did it. Right. Brakes. Oh, it's an island platform. I've just looked it up on Wikipedia. I already know it's a fucking island platform. What's wrong with me? Well, no. Okay, well, we'd have to be more specific. What is wrong with me in the context of not working out it's an island platform when I'd already see it's an island platform? Um, I believe there is a shuttle bus to St Andrews. The home of golf. From the station. And also home of St Andrews University. The university that all the royals have been to. Well, Prince William anyway. Anyway, we can stop now. We're here on time. Nice semaphore signal again. I don't know where you're going for your birthday. Any Loch Lomans anywhere near here, is it? Uh, the answer to that is no. That is the other side of the country. Yeah. Probably looking around, but I'm looking at lot at the moment. Uh, there is actually... I don't know if... No, the route doesn't even go that way. I have just got the southern part of that highland line as well as the Fort Williams of my lake, so the sort of just outside Glasgow to wherever it is. I assume those are your coach and bus links through St Andrews. We're not going through St Andrews, we're going to Dundee. Which is probably a lot worse than going to St Andrews. I don't know. I've not been to St Andrews, I've not been to Dundee. means I'm perfectly qualified to call them all shitholes. If you aren't keeping track already. So again it looks like there's some twisty turny track. Because apparently when they built this railway they were pissed. They couldn't build a fucking line straight. It has to weave all over the place. The junction here in a minute. Uh, oh no, there isn't a junction. Apology. It just looks like there used to be. A, there very obviously used to be a junction um, here, but that just ends in sidings now, and this portion then curves away to the north, uh, northwest. Heading quite steeply uphill, one in fifty seven, there's a another one seventy coming the other way. That's a fucking lie, unless that's like some other type of station, because the station's here and we've just been to it. <laughs> this isn't exactly setting the world on fire. But it is much, much longer than the once the uh, 170. So it's not doing so bad. The 170 would probably be starting to lose speed and then crawl backwards after this this length of hill at this speed. past St Michael's Golf Club. I don't know why it's St Michael's is Golf Club, but that's whose it is.
Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Oh, what's this? What's that for? 75? We're already doing 75. That's slightly worrying. 75 over the bridge. Well, 75 full stop. Oh, okay, it's probably for the fact that he's beginning to head downhill, so just... Watch your speed! Kill your speed, not a child. But if the child's playing on the railway, it's the child's own fault. Whee! Loads of downhill high speed, well, moderately high speed reverse curves. That'll be doing the train a lot of good. People getting thrown around, they're coffee sloshing everywhere. That'll fucking learn them. Sorry. Or giant sand pit? Is it a branch of Digger World? Who can say? What I can say is it's a bit twisty turny around here. At five miles per hour into the siding or loop or whatever that is. Whoa! Uh, well, that's like a little private station. What's that all about? Is it? Oh, it looks like a station for the sewage works. But do they like drive shit trains up there and pick up the shit and then transport it? Huh. How peculiar. Keeping on the speed, we're going back uphill again, so we're losing a bit of it again. 20 miles an hour limit coming up. That must be the bridge. Haha! <laughs> oh. 5 miles an hour warning, but we're doing that below that's so that's fine I'm gonna get a warning in a moment I suspect to get down to what's it called again uh, 20 miles an hour in a few moments Uh, we are indeed coming up to the Tay Bridge. Well, this Tay Bridge is actually the second Tay Bridge. The first one was... Some of the design. It collapsed in a disaster. Because the engineer who built it hadn't taken into account, I think it was wind forces on it. Which, when you built across a big inlet in Scotland, is probably a good thing to take advantage of, not to take advantage of, to take account of. Um, so, the original bridge blew down. Unfortunately, it blew down while the train was on it. Major rail disaster. Just bring up the details. Tay Bridge disaster. We're not doing anything apart from crawling along at 20 miles an hour now, so. A violent storm, Sunday the 28th of December 1879, the first Tay Rail Bridge collapsed. Killing it all aboard. And yes, it was the fact that the wind... Um, there wasn't any explicit allowance of wind load on the bridge. So it blew down, essentially. With when it was blowing with the train on it. Um, 75 dead, estimated. 60 known dead. Which I assume means they found the bodies. Cheery. But yes, here we go. Uh, if you just zoom out. The second Tay Bridge. You see the piers next to it here are from the first one. Um, they just removed this sort of bridge but left the foundation standing. Um, obviously, crawling over at 20 miles an hour. 
you're not doing damage to the, as much damage to the structure of the bridge if you're slowly crawling across it rather than blasting across at 75 or more. So the original tape, which was fairly similar to this, in terms it was a load of sort of um, basically box girders along a load of foundation piles, as you can see there. Um, but yeah, not quite as strong and without any wind loading calculated in. Bouch was knighted just after the bridge opened for his wonderful achievement, and then when the bridge blew down. He basically got really stressed out and killed himself. Did he kill himself or did he just die of ill health? I'm just scrolling through Wikipedia files. I'll just say he killed himself. I mean, let's, let's just say he killed himself, eh? It's not like it facts get in the way of a good story. Thomas Bouch lived to the age of 58, died in Moffat, Scotland, a year after it was a year after the disaster. He died within 18 months of being knighted, his reputation destroyed. Oh, so this this section here looks like it's a bit stronger, more girdery, so you can go a bit faster on it. We have to slow down to 25 anyway, so that's a little bit pointless. DFK something French kissing deep French kissing I'm guessing dirty French kissing Urban Dictionary offers up Dirty Fairfield Kids. Uh, deep French Kissing. There you go, escort slang. He didn't really kill himself, I don't think. I think he just... The stress of uh, the whole disaster and the inquiry afterwards meant he... Um, and yes, I get that was a joke, haha. -ha. But HST coming the other way. So he's showing its high-speed chops doing 30 miles an hour across the Tay Bridge. You can see the bridge then sort of curves around and meets the um, meets the shore, and then shortly afterwards into Dundee. There's that plane again. But what that's all about. Curves around, and again, much like the old one, sort of curved around. I wonder if they reused the piles in that place. That sort of part of the bridge. Well, um, it's a bit nearer the coast and perhaps a little bit more sheltered, so. Not flashing yellow, diverging aspect. Diverging line aspect. I'm going to be going slow enough to break within perfect sight of anything. Anyway, this is Dundee coming up across the water there, you can see. And if we just look across here. I can't see it because it's past the draw distance. I was going to say you should be able to see the Tay Road Bridge, but we might just need to get a bit close to see that. If they bother to model it at all, the lazy bastards. A bit rich, me, me call them lazy bastards when they've modelled this entire route as it is, but there we are. They're just not fair like that, am I? So, very unfair person. Dundee Platform 4, coming soon. Oh, he did kill himself, did he? Sometimes my brain just... That's not Dundee, is it? No, that's a different station. 
is even still open. What? Reading? Oh Christ, we're going down now, aren't we, off this bridge? Hey, that's the line off to Perth, I think, over there. But we're not doing that bit now. It's already nearly half past ten. Well, it'll be like a strip of land next to the... I think it's the best place to build an airport, isn't it? Flat little flat piece of reclaimed land. Less engineering required. An airport might be a rather grand name for it. It's probably an airstrip or, you know, not an airstrip, a little airfield or something. Or it's like a short runway. Not going to be like... Mega, is it? Ah, uh, Dundee's on fire, lovely. Crows are circling overhead to greet us. Okay, that's a bit of a drop down to the platform. Get ready on the brakes for that. The limit's 15 halfway through. Jesus. What gradient's this? One in 66. Steeper than that. Look, one in 35. Fucking hell. What is that all about? Is this a bay platform? Right. I put it on mute then, sorry. That was rather foolish. I was just talking about what the gradient was like. I don't know if any of that came through. I hope it did. 15 miles an hour into... Oh, there's the two bay platforms in the middle of the platform. I should really just use my eyes and look. 15 mile an hour limit. past the middle of the platform. Bring the whole train in. Oh, good. Uh, bring the whole train in and stop it. And here we are in lovely, lovely Dundee. And we're on time as well. Magnificent. I love how when I click the free camera I get uh, the daddy of all trains is spiky hair. Oh wow, there's a boat there. But did my, um, if I did my research I'd know what boat that is or ship that is. Um, no doubt parked up there. So there you go, there's the Tay Road Bridge. It's a big fucking causeway by the look of it more than a road bridge, but there you go. Um, the boat. The boat and the boat and the boat. Again, ship, probably more than boat. And there's the... Yeah, we're coming back out of the tunnel at the other end there. Oh yeah, there you go, it's Dundee. As rendered in train simulator. I like the Tay Bridge though, that's quite impressive. Ooh, there's a big freight train coming across. Ah, oh, well, it's only cars, who cares if they all plunge? <laughs> Complete! Coming soon, Scottish East Coast Mainline Part 2. Well, I I haven't seen that released, or I've not paid attention, so. I don't know. Unless it means the second part of it, where you go across to Perth. But I ain't doing that tonight, because it's half past ten, or thereabouts. And that is the end of that, so we just have to look what the final reckoning is. There isn't a score, but it will tell us how fucked, how badly we fucked up, or I fucked up. Um, five out of five targets complete, five out of five platforms complete. Four instances of speeding. And tonight we have done 107 miles. 172 kilometers. I think that's quite enough for one now. Um, obviously traveling across from Glasgow across to Edinburgh and then turning around from Edinburgh going up and across the um, Firth of Forth and then oh wait, come back from there heading north up to Dundee through the um, Scottish countryside and towns and Fife. Catch a lot, chaps, and any chapesses who are mysteriously watching, but I haven't seen any chapesses in the chat. So, that's a lot, chaps. All done.
There's Michael Portillo and his friend Alex Salmond, the King of Scotland. And yeah, so Monday's Road Train Simulator is done. I don't know if I'm doing on... I'm probably not doing Saturday because um, I've got a driving lesson. No, I'm not doing Saturday. Um, and I'm not doing Sunday because I've got a driving lesson. Lots of driving lessons coming up this weekend. But I'll do one at some point, I'm sure, sometime. Thanks very much for turning up, everybody. And if you're catching this later, thank you very much as well. You're even madder than the people who turn up to watch it live. Um, very enjoyable. Enjoyed it a lot. Thank you. And goodbye.